Tamam. Zen. Okay, how do I said her? All right. Um, I think we can start now. Just these shadows will disappear. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I hope all, all are you good. Uh, and I think I will start now the MRI. First session was about general uh, principles of MRI finding, about the T1 and T2, about the echo uh, gradient and the stir images. What are the special uh, part in the musculoskeletal system and how it, they are appears in the uh, MRI and uh, what kind of MRI part when there is something related to a special diagnosis. And uh, in this series of uh, lectures, we will talk about the MRI of the knee and especially today, we will start about the cruciate ligaments, all right? Uh, I will not be uh, bothered you about the post-operative ACL and PCL uh, reconstruction. So we want to know about the diagnosis of tears in the cruciate ligaments only. And this is regarding the part one. Part two will be about the menisci and other soft tissue injuries and uh, ligament, about, uh, uh, ligament injuries and the soft tissue tumor-like uh, structures, tumor-like tumor disorders, sorry. So as a learning objectives, we will start about in, to know what are the normal uh, signal intensities regarding the cruciate ligaments and what about their orientation and MRI anatomy. And the second thing is that to describe any abnormality in the uh, magnetic resonance signals about how, to, uh, how they appear in both T1 and T2. And uh, we need to uh, know about a thorough approach about the partial and complete tears. And uh, if are there any, anything in absence of the ligaments, like no signals around the ligament, there are some pitfalls. There must be no tears uh, regarding these uh, objects. So how about the anterior cruciate ligaments? Uh, regarding the technique, you know that the supine position of the patient uh, in the uh, MR uh, device, and then, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the patient will have an external rotation about 10 to 15 degrees. And sometimes the technician will do a sagittal oblique orientation in order to orient the, uh, hello, welcome, uh, in order to, uh, to orient the uh, section of the MRI with that of orientation of the uh, ACL. Regarding the ACL thickness, it must be three millimeter slice. <clears throat> and all the planes are required, like the sagittal coronal and axial. We always depend on the sagittal views. We always uh, do a sagittal view, but when we when there is an, something inconclusive regarding the sagittal, we need to know about axial view and coronal as well. They are indicative. Okay, what about the anatomy regarding in MRI? We know that the length of the bundle of the ACL, it is four, three to four cm long. It depends on the morphology of the knee and the, uh, uh, the height of the patient. And you know that uh, there are two bundles, the anteromedial and posterior laterals. And sometimes they are very, uh, ob uh, very obvious regarding the... Uh, <sighs> Sorry, there are some sounds, please. Uh, so uh, do you have a mute? Excuse me. Yeah. And uh, there, these two bundles may together uh, appear. I have a mute here. Hello. OK. <clears throat> All right. So please. Uh, have yourself a mute in order to make everyone else can hear. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So uh, these bundles made together are seen in the MRI in single image. So the intermedial bundles rounds parallel with that of the Blumensat line. This is very important 
uh, thing in the MRI when we are studying it anatomically. And uh, also, there is an infrapatella plica. Plica means that it is a fold of the synovium in front of the ACL. It may cover the ACL as well. So remember that something which is the, uh, this triangle, uh, I think the pointer is here, okay. Uh, this triangle, oh, this is a quadrant, sorry. This is a quadrant method regarding a Bernard quadrant that is seen when we are seeing here the attachment of the ACL at the lower corner of the uppermost, lower corner of the uppermost uh, rectangle here. And these are quadrants between one fourth and three fourths. This is the uh, femoral attachment where the ACL is seen. Look at this shadow. The shadow here will be apparent on the MRI, but here the whole posterior condyle uh, of the uh, femur will not be appeared in order. Uh, this is because that this section of the MRI will be inside the notch. Another thing important is that the modify, uh, modification of the MRI, <coughs> according to Stabile and rationing, it shows that they shows that the MRI signal uh, and uh, orientation of the ACL, it is about 43% of the uh, sagittal axis of the tibia. This is regarding the anatomy. So which ACL is torn? Can anyone tell me about these three pictures? If any candidate, you have to unmute yourself and see if there is any tear in these pictures. Let me share, uh, let us share uh, together, right? Third one, lowermost. Yeah. Okay. So together you choose a lowermost. Now let me tell you something. They are all normal. Okay. So why they are normal? <clears throat> if you look here, we look about the uh, welcome doctor. Uh, if you look here, you can see that the bundle of the ACL is that is uh, parallel with that of the Blumensat line which is the line that has intersect between both condyles of the femur. And this is shown here in T2. But what is the difference in the third one? What's happening here? What is happening here? Both they are parallel, yes, but it, is, it does not show the uppermost. Why? Because it is not tilted 40, uh, 15 degrees external rotation like this one. And if you, if you want to know how do I uh, suggest that you can see the sagittal view of the MRI of the femur and the sagittal view of that of the tibia. You can see that the femur is well oriented inside the notch here. Here, the femur uh, sagittal section, if you can see, it looks like a triangle. And that's why you can now suggest it is maybe normal, right? So let's see what they talk about. None of them. A well-defined contour straight course that is delineation of the individual fibers of bundles. All right. So if you can see the, here, the, uh, uh, the tibial plateau, it is almost flattened, not like this one. All right. And this is the, uh, the uh, tibial attachment, the footprint of the ACL. And here is the footprint oblique. That means the sagitt the section is not fully sagittally oriented with that of the bundles. So don't miss that. Another thing is here, when you see this is a T1 and this is a T2, and you can see that how the image is well performed inside the notch, which is a little bit parallel, but here is, it, you, it, it can concentrate it on the femoral attachment here of the ACL. And you can see a high signal intensity in both T1 and T2. This is not a tear. This is not an in intersubstance tear. However, sorry, doctor, I will mute you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, however, these are the two bundles of the anteromedial and posterior lateral. It is, it is well performed MRI. So what happened to the tear in MRI? It, they can be either complete or partial tears. 
An extension, usually it is caused by extension or deceleration injury with a quadriceps contraction. You know that there is a formerly called an, uh, an odongo's tired or unhappy tired about the MCL, medial meniscus and the ACL injury, which are caused by flexion abduction with external rotation. Sometimes a hemorrhosis or usually hemorrhosis about 90% of cases with a bony avulsion may occur, especially at the posterior tibial plateau. The anterior tibial, this is due to anterior tibial translation. Sometimes a hyperextension at about 45% of the uh, femur of the femoral condyle and avulsion or bony capsular attachment like that of the Segon departure. And you know what a Segon is. Okay, what about the signal intensity in tears? They are either an intraligamentous or intersubstance in the signal intensity, either focalized or generalized. Doctor, sorry, I have to mute you. Thank you. Internal structure irregularities like the fiber alteration, blurring of the fibers, this may suggest a tear. Any changes in diameter, thickened or thinning, you know that the fibers of the ACL is like a trumpet. It doesn't like a band, a single band, because in the middle they are narrow and they are fan-shaped in the footprint of the tibia. Any changes in that, it may suggest a tear. Changes in the external contour, either disruption or ill-defined, like that in the complete tears. And you know that the paraligamentous changes, like a bleeding effusion into the synovial sheath, and a double eye sign like that when you have a significant, especially in the acute injury. And a bony avulsion in the femoral or tibial insertion, sorry, doctor, <clears throat> any femoral avulsion in the femoral or tibial insertion, you can see it well in the MRI. So if there is a significant malalignment of the tibiofemoral joint, like that of a translation, especially when you do an anterior drawer test or a Lachman's test anteriorly, there will be a malalignment of the anterior cortices of both femur and tibia. <clears throat> now, what about grading? There are many grading systems, but however, however in MRI, a suitable and a worldwide uh, convinced uh, system according to uh, grades uh, the tiers acco uh, according to uh, the site and partial or complete. So a strain or subtle mid-substance tear, there are only interligamentous structure changes, the increased signal intensity on T1 and T2, bulk fiber are intact, unimpaired external configuration. This is very important here. And there is unchanged, no change in the contour, thickness, or length of the ACL. But if you can see during the arthroscopic examination, it is very lax. And sometimes laxity can be seen also um, during examination. The partial tear that has increased signal intensity in both sequences, thickening also sometimes, like an intraligamentous oedema, hemorrhage, and possibly a pseudomass around the bundle of the ACL. <clears throat> Sorry. Contour and fiber irregularity or partial discontinuity of the ligaments. And sometimes only one band, especially the posterior medial band, is ruptured. While complete tear, a pronounced increase in signal intensity, discontinuity completely or potential retraction of the ACL. And I will add for you, in ACL chronic injuries, and we, we can see it in many patients with the chronic tears, it may be attached to that of the PCL and deviation from the normal course like that uh, posteriorly and possibly a pseudomas. Not only a pseudomas, but there is a fibrous union or fibrous attachment of the ACL. Sometimes a cycloplesion when there is a rupture in the uh, distal uh, part of the ACL or a uh, reverse cyclope like that <clears throat> when it is ruptured from the femoral side and turn over itself. Okay, how does it look? Uh, many suggested that there is an increased signal intensity, overall increased signal intensity of the ACL in both T1, T2 and uh, T2 weighted image. Fast echo, this uh, means fast echo, this asterisk, 
and uh, <clears throat> gradient echo and uh, the stir fast uh, saturation, you know, everything has an increase in signal intensity. And uh, you can see that the, uh, the synovium, the, if there is a fresh hemorrhage, okay, a fresh hemorrhage, a bony bruise that is well seen by the uh, fast echo, and interligamentous edema, also in T1, uh, in T2, sorry, and uh, stir. And if there is any ligament tear, everything is high in signal intensity. So you know, in zero, no signal intensity, a low signal intensity in uh, this arrow, two arrows are intermediate and high uh, signal intensity is there in the T2 and uh, the fast echo. So what do we have here? Know that this strain is the least and most common, least see, uh, seen in the MRI, but is the most common because there is a signal intensity around the ACL bundle. Thank you. And you can see also the signal intensity along the fiber. There is no low signal intensity along the ACL. So it may suggest because of the T1 image is intact, both the femur and tibial attachment. So in the left, both sequences shows an increased signal intensity of the ACL and the pronounce in tibial two thirds that is spreading fiber is a slight, a bulk fibrous fibers, and this is called an ACL strain or uh, just strain. There's no tear. What about this one? This is a partial tear and uh, they suggested as a part two, these uh, are not uh, uh, well known because many technicians uh, or many MRI specialists know about the tear type two and one. The strain they suggested as a type one partial tear. And this is the part two, uh, uh, type two, sorry. So in the left T1, in the right T2, fast echo, there is an increased signal intensity here like not like this of the low signal intensity of the normal ACL. And here you can see that the arrow is suggesting a partial discontinuity of the femoral insertion. This, uh, and uh, there is around it a reactive effusion. Still the fibers are in the orientation. So what about this one, partial tear type three? The difference is that a pronounced signal intensity in both T1 and in T2, it is very well seen in T2 of the both sequences. A marked thickening, you know that the fiber is thin. You have to be sure about the three millimeter or 3.3 millimeters. But here you can see that it is very thickened. This is an acute injury of the ACL of a partial tear of the intermedial bundle. And it shows that partial discontinuity of the fibers, like that of the fiber, it can be seen here, it's wavy in the right image. Now, this one is an acute tear of the femoral insertion. In the sagittal left uh, T1 and the right T2 fast echo, a massive thickness of the femoral half of the ACL, you can see that all the insertion of the femur and sometimes a periosteum stripped here with that of the ACL, an abnormal signal increase both in T1 and T2. There is no fibers here. So it is a, com a complete tear of the ACL with a residual uh, continuity here as you see this in the arrow. Another case of complete tear, this is an acute mid substance tear. So if you can see here, the the ACL in the middle, there is a high signal intensity both in T1 and a little bit low signal or a high signal intensity here in T2 in this image. What happened here is that the thickening of the ACL throughout the course, again, with an increased signal intensity, both sequences, you can see that the central half and the proximal third is very irregular. It, not, it is not that with the Blumensat line. Like this one is almost vertical and this one is uh, almost uh, horizontal fiber. 
So this is an insufficient residual continuity with the posterior portion. Again, we have on the left T1, on the right T2 uh, echo study. Now you can see the completely irregular course of the fiber. Complete irregularity. There is nothing called ACL here. The defect zone in the central here and low signal intensity both in T1 and here in T2. Intraligamentous hemorrhage around the uh, around the uh, <coughs> sorry around the ACL, <coughs> as you see in the arrow, and the posterior defect of hoof fat pad. Look at here, the hoof fat pad all all the way posteriorly and straightening of the capsule, like in that with the PCL, <coughs> a hemorrhosis is suggested here. This is an acute injury too. One day after injury. Okay, now who can tell me after these uh, signs and we can see what are the tears? Can you give us a three finding in both T1 and T2? Let's share your ideas. Anyone can open his mic up. Yes. Yes. Three finding you can see in the MRI here and here. Mm -hmm. An increased intensity. Good. Or thickening and irregularity. Yes. Good. This is a thickened ACL, increase in thickness and discontinuity here. It's not just a tear. So, what about this one? What happened in the tibia? You can see a low signal intensity on the mid par portion of the uh, lateral tibia. Bone marrow edema. Bone marrow edema. Mm -hmm. Possibly a bone marrow edema. Good. Which indicates what? Which indicates a complete tear, right? All right. Let's see what happened here. Now, this is a tibial ACL insertion injury. And a bony discontinuity, you can see here, this is low signal intensity of the articular surface in T1. And it is also seen here in T2. Look at, it is jumped away with that of the ACL. Elevation of the bony lamella, at, as I uh, mentioned here, into the joint space. Okay, what else? As you see, uh, as you say, a pronounced signal increase of the tibial two thirds, rather than the femoral, you can you saw it before in the femur, now in the tibia, the signal intensity higher in T2 than in T, uh, than uh, in distal than in the proximal, like this one. And it's suggested grade three or complete tear. And also there is distal patellar tendinosis. You can see that the patella, don't forget the patella, there is an injury here. So this has, this case has a very severe injury. All right. Okay. What else you can see? Who can say uh, this one? Oh, newcomers, hello. <clears throat> what can you see here in T1 and T2? Sorry? Uh, I suggest uh, that you open your mic in order to answer the question. <laughs> All right. Who can see or uh, who can say what are seen in this MRI? Let's share our ideas. Please open your mic. Any candidate or any colleague can share. <clears throat> yes, Dr. Mohammed. Bonnie. Uh, 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 يعني بوني ابفيزيال انجري بوني بانكريز سيجنال انتنسيتي ان ذا بالابيفيسز يس جود جود وات ايلس ات از از ذير ا بوني ابفيزيال انجري ذاتس رايت يو كان سي هير ا لو سيجنال اند ا هاي سيجنال انتنسيتي ان تي 1 اند تي 2 ريسبكتيفلي هاو ابوت ذا اي سي ال كونديشن is it intact, partial, or complete tear? 
Uh, شوف intact. Yeah, it may be intact. The same length, all right? There is no detachment of both femoral and intercepted or the tibial insertion, right? So what is going on is that you can aid your diagnosis with a coronal view, and you can see the tibial eminence of fracture here. So, eminence of fracture. Very good. So what happened here now is that a straight to a curved fracture line through the tibial plateau and partially at the level of the thermal epiphyseal cleft, as you said, doctor. And this is an extended to the anterior margin of the ACL footprint or, and to the base of the posterior cruciate ligament here. There is no displacement of this fracture. And actually, this is, com this is very important to know that how the fluid level is, is uh, thickened by the MRI, especially in T2. And you notice that the ACL is intact, hopefully, just a slightly and increased signal intensity only in the posterior aspect. And you can see a hyper intensity of the tibial plateau fracture line. And this, uh, this part, sorry, this is a T1. Here is a T2. Oh, sorry. Someone is coming. Um, a hyper intensity of the tibial plateau fracture line and of the ACL, especially in posterior portion and intact fiber in the anterior part. So it is a slight effusion, okay? This is the effusion of the fluid. And what you see in the coronal, there is a curvilinear signal decrease show that the course of the fracture line through the base of the tibial eminence, and there is no displacement. You can confirm any diagnosis with the X-ray with this, is very uh, uh, indicative for surgery. So you have to be sure about the sure. MRI finding. Okay. Now what about the posterior cruciate ligament? Again, we have a few notes about this. All sections are required. The sagittal, coronal, and axial view sometimes helpful. A comfortable position. We don't need an external rotation. The, M, uh, the slice thickness will be four millimeters. Regarding the MR anatomy, like that of the ACL, it considers the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, is the longest ligament, which starts from the anterolateral medial femoral condyle slopes posteriorly into the posterior tibia. In these anatomic landmarks, you can divide our the PCL into two bundles, the anterolateral from the insertion of the medial condyle and the posterior medial, unlike that and the reverse of the ACL. You can see also there is something called the meniscofemoral ligament, Humphrey anteriorly, Reisberg posteriorly, and they are fairly seen in the MRI because the PCL is well-defined, homogeneous, low signal intensity, both T1 and T2. And the main thing is that you can see both this low signal intensity of the PCL in two consecutive sections. Since the PCL is relaxed during knee extension, the course is a slightly curved, like figure of six in Arabic or Indian, like we see. Both men meniscofemoral ligaments, as we say before, they are not seen clearly in the vincity of the PCL. So what about the abnormal finding? The first thing is that the interligamentous signal increase, either focal or generalized like that of the ACL. Also, there is an internal structure irregularities, spreading, undulating, blurring, which is a partial disruption. The changes in the diameter, like a focal or generalized thickening or thinning of the fiber, sorry. <clears throat> the changes in external contour, an irregularity, a partial or complete contour disruption, a changes in the course, like a more pronounced curving, kinking, and retraction, which is rare. Paralegamentous structure or changes, sorry, uh, paralegamentous uh, changes like bleeding or fusion, they are very, very common seen in the MRI. And rarely we can see a bony avulsion. And I will apply you some cases of bony avulsion, especially in the tibial insertion. And if you have it, there is a tibiofemoral malalignment, like an anterior displacement or sagging posteriorly. 
in subluxation of the femur relative to the tibia. And a lesser degree also present with the ligament hyperelasticity and insufficiency or laxity. Okay, like that of the ACL, we have strain, partial, and complete tears. And this is the same of the ACL as we see before. So what about the normal? If you can see here in the right, uh, in the right and the left, the left shows a coronal section of a T1. It depicts the PCL like that of the arrow. You can see this is the medial femoral condyle and the medial tibial plateau is lower than the lateral and also the uh, fibular head. This is the lateral. So the ACL is visualized as vertically orientation here in the arrowhead. And this is not an empty notch sign because if you missed the ACL as previously, you can uh, aid it by the diagnosis of a coronal section and you cannot see this part. And uh, there is a signal intensity which is low in the notch and we call it an empty notch sign. As we say, a figure six in Arabic, it shows in the sagittal view of the PCL, low signal intensity from the femoral attachment into the posterior tibia. And it is hypotense band and slightly curved in proximal portion between the posterior margin of the intercondylar notch and the posterior tibial plateau. Now, what about this one? Here you can see the arrow. It, is, it suggests a high signal intensity in the, in the uh, sagittal view in the mid portion exactly of the PCL and a pronounced signal intensity on a relative T2 image which suggests the tear or a strain. Again, left T1 and right T2 echo. The increased signal intensity of the proximal third of the PCL. Here in the T2, it's more obvious on a relatively T2 image. With a slight thickening, you can see here, it is thickened as compared to this one. Sorry, this one. It must not be thickened much. So the thickened fibers that are relatively uh, increase the thickening near the insertion with an intact main continuity. The continuity is maintained. You can see here around the PCL, there is a slight effusion also. What about this case? Here in the mid portion, a hyper intensity throughout the course of the PCL. And it is a tube or rail like margin continuity. Okay. The slight joint effusion and in an atraumatic posterior knee pain. This case has no trauma, but is a re uh, repetitive knee joint subluxation without a trauma. This is okay, this case, a partial injury of the PCL. Now, the more severe injury, the more bizarre shape of the MRI looking. You can see as a signal intensity is increased in T1 in relative to the hypo signal intensity of the normal attachments of the PCL and femur and tibia. And the contour distension of the PCL also, you can see it is thickened. It is a pronounce in T2 and uh, in the central third especially and inadequate residual discontinu uh, continuity. So this is a complete tear one week of a player with a contusion. What you can see here in both uh, the sagittal and coronal view, a thickening of the PCL. This is the ACL in front of it. But the PCL, sorry, doctor, I have to mute you. <clears throat> the PCL here is uh, thickened along the course, a discontinuity from the femur, or from, sorry, from the middle portion, an inadequate residual continuity of the fiber as well as it is seen in the uh, coronal section when we are compared to the normal one. Now, a massive thickening abnormally, abnormally in signal increase of the PCL through the course and central third and distal third, especially in T2. 
it shows that completely discontinued and severe hemorrhoidosis, which is most clearly in T2. What about this one? If you can see here, the, li the liner signal decrease in the TBL plateau, and this suggests a disruption or a detachment or avulsion of the PCL. And you can see the PCL here, it is good and uh, good uh, low signal intensity, but here is low and detached from the uh, TBL attachment. And here you can see that the distal portion is slightly compressed in PCL. Again, the same picture, it is very well and clear that the detachment of the PCL is seen in the T2 image with a slight displacement about half centimeter. Lastly, we can see that in every case of PCL and ACL, sometimes it is not present. So let's begin with the PCL. Maybe there is an acute bleeding among, among the course of ligament. It masks the uh, ligament structures that caveat and uh, inaccurate assessment of severely injury. So that's why we need to have a chronic PCL tear. But to be aware about when you have this patient, you have to draw a blood or hemo, uh, hemorrhosis or hemo, uh, hemosynthesis, and then you assess it by a clinical and radiographic MRI examination. There is no retraction of free ends when the synovial sheath is intact despite complete rupture. Okay. That is underestimation of a grade, and this is a technical problem. Masking of the PCL by inflammatory synovial process, like in synovial chondromatosis, you have to be sure about the PCL, whether it is intact or not. Regarding the ACL, the main thing is that, and most common, which is seen, when you have seen the PCL normally, you can go for a two sections uh, before the PCL and after two sections after the PCL when you see it. If you don't see it in both these two in front and, uh, uh, in front and behind that, you can see that uh, either the technician problem there is a problem in the obliquity sectioning of the posterior femoral cortex. The black bone contour mimic that of the femoral ACL insertion. And to avoid this pitfall that like we see in the first three pictures, you remember it? So compare with the coronal as we see and axial slice. And in inconclusive cases, the coronal section, you can see it as uh, what we say, it is the empty note sign if needed. Also additional slides, a thin section image, two millimeter, may also readjust the section orientation. Another poor visual visualization of the femoral ACL portion, depending on the position of the knee, angulation, and sagittal section. Intrasynovial bleeding may make the rupture grading difficult or inaccurate. A high fat content of the uh, cruciate ligament may mimic bleeding, very rare cases. And lastly, a fibrosis associated with the chronic tears may mimic that of the intact ligament as the scar tissue is hypointense in both T1 and T2. And remember that some fibrosis of the femoral side detachment of the ACL is attached with that of the PCL. That's what we have today. Thank you very much for your participation. And if you have any questions or comment, please unmute yourself and I will be happy to hear you. Hello, I'm Mr. Sinan. Hello, Bassam. Hello, Habibi. Shonek, <laughs> Of course, راح يبقى intraarticular aqua blood. Yes. Well, of course, راح يسوي عندنا disturb بال بال يعني بالviews اللي مثل ما قلت أنت بال بالنسبة لهاي timing مال ال 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 MRI بالنسبة لهيج patient إنه هون انتظر two weeks وبعدين نسوي له. No. Immediate. Immediate. Look, yes, immediate. 
in the ACL especially cases, there is a significant hemorrhosis, you know, and you have to deal with that hemorrhosis by arthrocentesis, all right? So immediately you can do MRI, but I suggest a STIR image. I suggest a STIR without mm. anything. Yeah, without T1 and T2, you cannot wait for that. So when you have a STIR image, you will have a clear part of the fluid or in the intermeniscal segment and inter, uh, sorry, interligamentous uh, structure will be more apparent. If you have a doubt again, then you can do an immediate arthroscopic, uh, it is not diagnostic, immediate arthroscopic uh, evaluation of the ACL and uh, reconstruction as well. Then I mean, I'll hurry up the investigation. Yeah. I mean, what's the benefit of it? هو احنا اوريدي يعني البيشنت ويز اي سي ال انجري راح يجي انه رينج اوف موشن مالته نوت لايك ذا نورمال بيرسون اوريدي احنا وي ويتين فور تو ويكس لحد ما انه ريجين نورمال يعني رينج اوف موشن حتى نفوت على انترفينشن وياه صح لو لا؟ ويل اكشلي ذا انترفينشن اوف اي سي ال از ايذر دو ات اور ويت ات از ايذر ديورينج ذا فيرست 10 اور 15 دايز از ذا موست اوف ذا Sport medicine, sport guidelines. Sport medicine guidelines, and not only the guideline. Actually, many of the studies should suggest that early acute reconstruction of the ACL. So you can do it within the 15 days, or if there is an organized hematoma, you cannot do it until you wait for one for six weeks or eight weeks. يعني بهالحاله احنا اذا خلينا مثلا امر اي ورا تو ويكس انه نقدر نقول هذا يعني برنسبل خليه او يعني كوركت هذا الموضوع مو الا ايرلي كلش انا هذا لا قصدي يعني بالامتحان اذا سالني تعرف بعض اسئله مثلا يقول لك شو كنت تسوي لامر اي هيجي شو كنت تسوي له يعني هسه لازم هسه بعد يومين ثلاثه مثلا قبل تو ويكس حد ما رجين او انه سبسايد الهيمو ارثروسيس يعني بهالحاله على مود ما يخلي هاي البيت فولز اللي قلت عليها انت يعني بس يو تشينج ات انتو ا كرونيك reconstruction because يعني, after 15 days of ACL tears you have to wait for more than two months right uh-huh. so you have to do it immediately within the two weeks يعني إذا أحنا... uh-huh. Uh-huh. you have to make يعني... it clear more clear and you suggest for the MRI technician to do a stair image all right uh-huh. Uh-huh. يعني أكو ACL injury إنه خلال الأول two weeks they put on the intervention scope مباشرة yes. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. an okay, acute okay, reconstruction okay. of ACL. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Shukran. Thank you very Thank much you. for your question. Yeah, if you have uh, not wanted to talk, uh, you can chat, uh, you can write in the chat box. Uh, Naam? Yes, please. Assalamu alaikum, Shank Ami. Hello, Ami. Best soal. Yani, Hna Shon Akufed anatomical marker. بال نعرف انه هذا البيست سلايس تو فيجوالايز ذا اي سي ال ذاتس ذا كونديشن اوف ذا تكنيشن بيكوز ذا تكنيشن از فيري اورينتد ذي هاف تو بي مور اورينتد اباوت ذا اورينتيشن اند بوزيشن اوف ذا ني اور ذا اورينتيشن اوف ذا اكزيال سيكشن اوف اي سي ال وي ساي بيفور وي ساي بيفور ان ذا ان ذا فورمر سلايدز that the slices must, must be three millimeters section of the ACL. This is first. And second, secondly, yes. uh, the ACL orientation is about 43 degrees or 43 percent oriented from the, uh, that of the, uh, the tibial uh, mechanical axis, okay? And the third thing is that you know mm. that the ACL orientation uh, there's a fan uh, is a trumpet like. You know what trumpet is? Book. يعني انه شلون حلق البوق اذا صاير هو بال بالفوت برنت اند ذين ات ويل بي ثينينج مور بروكسيمالي اند ذيس از واي ماني تكنيشيانز سجستد ات از ات از تورن بس اكشولي يو كان سي ات ان ذا ارثروسكوب اند ات از فيري ثيك اند تايت اند ذاتس واي ذا اورينتيشن ماست بي بارالل ويز ذات اوف ذا اي سي ال سو وين يو روت وين يو نيد تو رايت ان ام ار اي او بريسكرايبنج ان ام ار اي بليز Suggest, I suggest you to take a full history of the patient to say where is the positive uh, Lachman's test uh, and it is soft or hard point in Lachman. The anterior drawer test is very important to write it down when you are uh, referring your patient into an MRI, okay? Okay, so that, I'll see mm-hmm. the camera. Thank you. OK. 
Okay. Um, I think there are latecomers here. So uh, if there are. Miss Inan, بخصوص هذا المريض اللي عرضت X the sagittal view Malta or the coronal. Yeah. The اللي اللي بعد a child اللي عنده tibial imminence. Rupture. This is not a child. So, and the tibial imminence fracture. Fracture. Oh, okay. ACL can can intact. This one. Uh huh. Yeah, adolescent. Mm hmm. Mm. Yes. Then, I mean, this is an indication of surgery. And the shino. The rupture of the fracture. The fracture. You have an unstable fracture. Then, we say, "Hne, حسب حسب المك المكيفر هذا يعتبر type one. Yeah. More displaced. Yeah. For type one, you may show in a ممكن conservative. ممكن. Mm hmm. But if there is any displacement more than five millimeter, you have to mire the McKeever type two, right? And you have to put it a screw inside. No, sir. So that's type one, not type two, I mean. والله هي الاكس راي ما موجوده بس الام ار اي يعني هو حسب الام ار اي دي بين تايب 1 يعني انه مو ديسبليس يعني ما صار بي ديسبليسمنت يس ذا ام ار اي اولسو سجست ات از ان ديسبليس فراكشر سبيشلي ان تي 1 بس ان تي 2 ذير از ا سيجنال انتنسيتي ويتش از هاي انذر كونفيرميشن اوف ان ديسبليس فراكشر سوري از ذا كورونال سيكشن يا So if it is the uh, McKeever uh, type one, yeah, you go with the non-operative treatment. Why not? Yes. Okay. So next week will be the second part of the knee MRI finding about the menisci, the medial and the lateral meniscus. Okay. And I have to. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this uh, lecture, and uh, I'm very uh, happy with uh, your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, ah, Muhammad Qahtan. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see if anyone have any comment. Yes, the will be on YouTube. Okay, Okay, I will share this one. Oh, two, two, two. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Uh, you will see this lecture uh, in the YouTube as soon as I upload it. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day. <laughs>